Uh, no, that title is not clickbait. I did actually spend a full year on a series of drawings. So for those of you that don't know me, I'm a 22 year old charcoal and graphite artist that specializes in surrealism and hyperrealism. Meaning that I like to draw things as realistically as possible, but in a way that they can't be realistic, if that makes any sense. Just recently I've been getting into surrealism, but I've always been obsessed with trying to replicate different patterns and textures with just pencils. So all of that has kind of led to my, my current style. Now for the series of drawings, it's senior year of college and I want to do a senior research capstone creative project. So for the research side, I wanted to look at the connection between art and mental health, whether that be art therapy, self-expression, you know, whatever else. But I also wanted to tie in my own personal experiences with that connection into it. Hence why I have a studio side to the capstone. So the summer before I determined Determined I wanted to have research for the statistical side of everything and I set of drawings for the personal side of it And I knew at this time that I wanted to pursue art post-graduation So I figured you know might as well graduate with some momentum and even you know a bigger portfolio So here's my official artist statement if you'd like to read it just pause the video so growing up with OCD, I tended to handle things a bit differently than everyone else people would always compare me to a machine uh, just because I was super tedious with everything and I had these routines that I always had to go through and I was not only for my art, but for everything, I was a total perfectionist. So I wanted to take this machine comparison and showcase it in a literal sense. I wanted to try and demonstrate how uncomfortable it can be at times for me. And I wanted to show, you know, maybe it's not as easy as just repairing something mechanical. So the series consists of six drawings and they're in pairs. The first pair of drawings demonstrates how OCD affects the way I think the second pair act and the third feel. So starting with thing, I started the first drawing in June of 2022. And my initial goal for the first two drawings was to make the viewer as uncomfortable as possible, essentially. I wanted them to be really intrigued and interested in the drawing, but also want to look away. But I think the most important thing was introducing the mechanical aspect of it right off the bat, which I think I, uh, I definitely did. Misplaced memory a repair part one shows the during process of the repair. My head is positioned on this metal pole and is stabilized by all these wires while I operate on a sliver of the motherboard in my head. I am completely doused in motor oil and I look very uncomfortable. I wanted to show that yes, I'm mechanical, but the emotion I'm showing is very human. You know, basically something is wrong with me and it needs fixed. Misplaced memory of repair part two shows the aftermath. My head is back on the vessel. I'm smiling, I'm content with everything. However, the scars and the leaking oil everywhere and just all the remains from part one kind of contradict that smile. And I really wanted to show that, you know, mechanically I fixed, you know, what, what's wrong up here. But these, you know, these welding scars can be both physical and mental. These two drawings took the longest out of the series. I completed them over the summer, so maybe that's why. So part one took 164 hours total. But part two took 190 hours, which is the most I've ever spent on a drawing. Like, I still can't get over the fact that I spent that much time on that. And yes, I do keep track of every hour I draw because that is very important as an artist to time track, not for the client, but also for yourself. So if you are an artist and you are not time tracking, do it. But yeah, so during the summer, I was drawing six days a week, like seven to eight hours a day. Like it was crazy, the grind I was on. Behind the scenes, taking the reference photos for these drawings was almost just as uncomfortable as how I made the drawings look. So for part one, for the most part, all the wiring is practical. I improvised everything kind of going in and out of the eyes, maybe a couple places here and there, but I wanted to make sure it looked as authentic as possible. So I did spend a couple hours making these wires and putting wax for your teeth on the end so that I didn't stab myself. The motherboard was um, the motherboard to like a little kid's toy. I found in the basement, I just took it apart. And the hands used were my brothers who you can see here, I used that kid for a lot of my references. So shout out Drew. He's definitely been in some very uncomfortable situations. Oh, and the motor oil is actually chocolate syrup. And, and when turned black and white, it's almost identical, both color and consistency. Well, after you heat it up a little bit. Yeah, I just figured that would be a better alternative than using motor oil. 
uh, it tastes a little better. So for part two, I ordered this really fake, cheap uh, skin makeup that a lot of like, a lot of makeup artists use. I got off Amazon. I wanted the scar from the motherboard to look as real as possible, but after spending hours trying to apply it, um, it just wouldn't stick. And when it did, if I touched it, the whole thing would come off. So it's there in the photos, but honestly, I just completely improvised it in post. Uh, that was a complete disaster. Same with all the syrup, it just kept running. And by the time you would start taking the picture, it would already be like dripping down my face. So that was also done in post. That was a very frustrating shoot. Um, I just didn't have the equipment or tools at the time and nothing was going right. My DSLR just wouldn't cooperate with me. So that was definitely a, uh, that was a shoot to remember. Okay, moving on to the second pair. The Bed of Nails part one, part two, demonstrate act. I knew from the very beginning that act would be uh, biting my nails. It's something that I've done my entire life. And I'm constantly picked on for it because uh, they look terrible. It's just something that it's so subconscious at this point. I don't even know I'm doing it. So part one shows the moment that I realized that I actually bit off my index nail. And then part two shows what has to be done to replace it. So this set isn't like a during and after like the first set because I wanted to show this continuous narrative. This obviously isn't something that has just happened once or happens here and there, which is why in part one, you can already see the scars from a previous repair, which is then showed in part two. I really want to stress that this is something very common. I think from a technical standpoint, three is definitely my biggest accomplishment. After the first set, I was super tired of drawing hair. So I decided last second during the photo shoot to throw a beanie on. I figured, you know what, it's a texture and pattern that I haven't done ever, I think. So it would be a cool challenge and just different than all these strands of hair that I, I didn't wanna do. And then I also threw on some bokeh effect to it. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically the blurring out of focus effect on things like in the background of photos, which I've also never done before. So I was really testing myself for these. But yeah, this half blurry cloth texture was so tough to do. It took me a little bit to get my footing on it, but eventually I kind of understood what I needed to do. And now it's like one of my favorite parts of the entire series. I love that beanie so much. I think it's, I think it's the most well done texture in the entire series. And part one's not that big on the mechanical side of things. So uh, this reference really wasn't that hard to shoot. Uh, I just needed to get lighting and kind of make sure the camera worked with the bokeh. Oh, the scars on the fingers are improvised. I didn't try to do anything during the shoot for those. I figured those can just be improvised. Uh, same with a lot of the oil, a lot of the drippage and uh, some of like the shiny effects on them were also not there during the photo shoot. Other than that, it's pretty tame and subtle. However, part two was definitely a different story. The reference for this image was over 20 different images combined. It was crazy. I had to Photoshop different nails because I don't have long nails the bolts, the wires, the oil, the stands, the, all the different fingertips everywhere. It was a challenge, but it was a fun challenge. I, I definitely enjoyed it. Um, and the photo shoot surprisingly went really smooth. It was like kind of like a one take, like, okay, we'll just take one picture of each part and then I'll see how they look and we might have to come back to it. But we never did, so it was really nice. And because it's so mechanical, I think it does make up for the lack of the mechanical side of part one. People always ask, you know, if you had to pick one drawing out of the series to be, you know, advertised, what would it be? And I definitely think part two of this pair is the answer. I think it just shows the mechanical side really well. And it's also much more accessible to people that don't know the background than the other ones. So yeah, four is definitely the poster child. So overall, I think technically speaking, I learned the most from these two. They didn't take as long as the first pair. Number three clocked in at 152 hours and part two clocked in at 141. So the last pair is titled Change of Heart for a pair parts one and two. Obviously for fail, I had to do the heart, which was the engine. Part one shows the moment in time when I realized that my Engine is smoking and has blown a hole through my chest. I have a fire extinguisher in my hand, but it's not gonna do much. So instead I reach in hopefully to pull it out or fix it before it's too late. Part two is after I pull it out and what that has done. So for part one, I wanted to have this incredible sense of urgency. And for part two, I wanted to have this sense of accepted defeat, but through a positive mindset. After all, it's the last drawing of the series and I needed to end on a note that sticks with people. 
I wanted it to end positively, but and I didn't want the viewer to think that, you know, all the scars and all that stuff's in the past, we're forgetting about it, we're moving on, fresh start, because that's never the case really in real life. And I'm looking over at this engine that once powered me and has now basically killed the vessel. Oh, my favorite thing is how the orientation of the drawings in this pair, they match the orientation of my body, which I think is really cool. There are a bunch of letters and numbers and symbols all over the engine that I put in in post because I really want the engine to showcase my life right now. You know, whether these abbreviations are people in my life, people that are important to me, you know, physical appearance, they mean, they mean a bunch of stuff, but I think that's important to do to, to make it your own. And I actually did that in the first drawing, which I don't think I mentioned. On the motherboard, those weren't the symbols that were originally on that. So the repair for the heart wasn't successful, but I'm okay with that. There's no really sense of urgency in my expression like there is in number five. So drawing five was by far the hardest to finish. I've never felt more defeated during a drawing than this one. I mean, that smoke was so painful. And it's one of those things where like smoke isn't, technically speaking, it's not hard to do, but it's hard to do well. I hate going to bed with my head hanging. I will stay up hours. I'll stay up until the sun comes up before I go to bed disappointed and not happy with the section that I've done. But I think it was like four nights in a row I went to bed just so defeated. But eventually I did get it how I like it. And now it's one of my favorite drawings of the series. Part one took 139 hours and part two took 136 hours. So they're pretty close to one another. And again, the, I keep shedding off time. I don't know if I'm just getting really in the groove and knowing what I'm doing or I'm just kind of rushed by the deadline before graduation. Um, but it got the drawings done, so I can't complain. And part two was another challenge because that engine was the most detailed thing I've ever done, especially freehand. I mean, like there's so many lines and different mechanical parts that need to be you know, perfectly lined up or it just doesn't look right. And that was definitely another challenge, but that was a challenge that I actually had fun with, unlike the smoke, which uh, I just, hated so much but yeah that engine took a majority of the hours probably like 90 of them and it was kind of a blast to do oh and let's not forget the behind the scenes for these these were the hardest to capture without a doubt so for drawing five i wanted to have my own reference for the smoke so what i did is i drove down to the local fireworks store got a bunch of like smoke sticks and smoke bombs and then one night i went out set up my camera in my driveway and lit one of the smoke sticks and i didn't realize how much smoke those things produce like i kid you not like i literally almost burned down my neighborhood so then i just chose the smoke bombs which were uh not as aggressive got a couple shots of those and then i needed to shoot myself obviously so the night after i went out in the dark again set up the lights and everything outside in the driveway as well but here's the thing so how's outside shirtless in this super makeshift setup now mind you it is january it was like 15 20 degrees i was so cold i'd run out take a couple pictures run back inside run out, take a couple pictures, go back inside. And the pictures were literally blurry because I was shivering. Now drawing six wasn't much better. Again, I wanted everything to be as authentic and organic as possible. So I took a bunch of chocolate syrup and dumped it all over my garage floor, got shirtless again and laid in it, freezing and so sticky. I took multiple showers to try to get it off me and it just wouldn't come off. Oh, it was so sticky, but it was definitely worth it. it made post editing a lot easier. And I guess I can't say it wasn't memorable. Now for the engine. I wanted something that could realistically fit in a chest cavity. I was looking all online and every single engine I came across was either too big or thousands of dollars. You eventually realized that weed whackers that are gas powered have small little engines in them. So found a broken one that was in terrible shape on Facebook marketplace and picked it up, took it apart, and we had this little engine that could fit right in my hand. I beat it up a little bit. I made it pretty for the camera. I did etch a little stuff in it just for proportions and post. So yeah, these two drawings had the most extensive photo shoots out of all of them by far, but they're definitely a really fun way to end the series. But yeah, once I finished everything in April, I framed the drawings, got them all ready. Uh, they were exhibited at my college museum and I was able to present them along with the research paper I did. And there you have it, a full self-reflection about a self-reflection.
But most importantly, I want to thank everyone that has helped me along the way in some way, shape, or form. Huge thank you to my family, Allie, Drew, both my parents for helping me every day with little things I needed, whether it was helping with a reference or supplies or holding something still or an idea that I, I was too indecisive about. I mean, they, they helped me so much and I can't thank them enough. I would also love to thank everyone in the IMA department, especially Ryan, who I absolutely could not have done any of this without. So Ryan, thank you so much for everything that you've done and i'd also like to thank you for being here and supporting me everyone that has shown me love on social media i wouldn't have completed the series and have been able to wake up and do eight hours of drawing if it weren't for your constant support and love i mean seriously it you guys are incredible i learned so much from doing this year-long series i improved technique wise i learned so much from the research i did and most importantly i learned a lot about myself that i didn't even consider thinking about before it it was like this huge third eye opening kind of moment for me which was really cool i really appreciate you staying to the end to watch this if you're interested in seeing the drawings in hd along with reading the research a little more about them etc everything's on my website i'll put the link below also i have very limited edition prints of each drawing on my website they are one-to-one -to, -one to the original. They are super high quality. They look amazing. They're hand signed and hand numbered to 22 each. Once they're gone, they're gone. And I just put them on sale actually. So if you want some art for your walls, there you go. That link will also be down there. Oh, and if you're interested in purchasing one of the originals, those are now for sale as well. And you can contact me through my website for that too. Again, link below. Make sure to follow me on TikTok and Instagram because I will be posting daily updates on my newest drawing here very shortly. And once the ball starts rolling, I'll be going live on Twitch daily as well. So keep an eye out for that and consider subscribing because I plan on posting weekly. I appreciate you being here and hopefully I see you soon.